Hi. Hi. Uh, sorry. I, uh, I, I was playing, uh, Ratchet and Clank. He's good. I'll change your icon and get ready here because you're the one whose life hangs in the balance. Okay. Here. Here. Uh, this file. And. Which one's left? That one. There we go. Anybody have any questions or concerns before we officially begin? None. Uh, I'll just do a small recap because I don't recall. You're in Candyland, full of magical fairies and gumdrops. Your job today is to avoid eating too much so you don't get a stomach ache. Actually, I do have one. It's some somewhat of a joke, but now that I think about it, you're the false... joke. You're you're more of a joke. <laughs> See, you're making fart noises. You're a fart. Uh, I I was going to ask, would it actually be possible to turn uh, certain weapons into a flail if I attach them to the end of a rope and swung it around? The answer is yes, but it would be an improvised weapon. Okay. So you could use it, and it would gain, say, the reach property. Actually, Flail doesn't have reach, but it does have the trip property in the rules I'm accustomed to, not speaking for fifth edition. But it would be a poorly balanced uh, for improvised weapon with a penalty to attack rules. Does Got that make it. sense? Yeah, because my joke question started as, oh, what if I attached my rapier to a rope and swung it around? Well, the other issue there is, of course, rapiers aren't meant to be slashing weapons, they're piercing. Yeah, Just and then my, and and then my next to a... Well, I could probably do that with my dagger instead, or a longsword. Yeah, it'd be closer to a Kurusagami instead of a flail, but sure. What the There's heck actually a already a weapon called a whip dagger. I was going to say, that is actually also a weapon in Pathfinder. Um, it's an exotic weapon, which means you have to have training for it, but it is essentially a dagger that you can use at range. And a Kurusagami is those kind of kama, the sickles that you attach to a chain. Oh.
Excuse me. Hello everyone and welcome to the stream. I am Razim and this is Fissafuri Dungeons and Dragons. I'll turn it over to uh, Mahal now. Hello everyone, I am Arlenia. I will be your dungeon master today. As a quick recap, since it has been an extra week, the party has been chasing down some elemental cultists and their actions and based around several elemental orbs of which they have encountered one in the last couple of sessions they discovered the lair of a necromancer through information provided by Brum Hotsan defeated him mercilessly upon his very special birthday slaughtered all of his friends and used the back stairwell to enter the underground cavern network where the cultists are rumored to be housed. They explored sections of it, killed some poor gaming ogres, encountered some specters, found a magical hammer, and have just finished combat with a set of minotaur who were sleeping on the ground. If you will recall, just as we ended last session, you heard noises from nearby. The scuffle you caused during your fight appears to have aroused other attention. Yeah, it did. How are we still alive at this point? Well, you all talked together and decided to take a two-week break, and whoever was in the other room said that was fine with them because one of them had to go to their nephew's birthday party. But aside from that, 
the party is in somewhat low health for many of the members. Spells have been used. Your recovery die are exhausted in some cases. So, we shall begin here. Unfortunately, as you all turn to confront this newest threat, a cloud of dust stirred up by the fight has tickled the nose of your unexpected companion, the Bat Dusty. And with a sniffle and a snuffle, he sneezes, and in a pink-colored puff of smoke, vanishes before your eyes. That was not quite helpful. No. Oh. You didn't like him anyway, so whatever. I mean, it was at least a distraction for the enemy? He was another one body to target, true. Tato, you are the nearest one to the noises that were heard. Oh yeah, I remember taking a full defense. But you my did. takeaway from him disappearing is don't go near the perp the pink mist. Oh, that dissipates almost immediately. It was just a standard magical effect. Oh. Well, still, that was some... Oh, do we have the map anyway, still? Sorry, back to you, Taylor. Oh, I uh, preloaded that. I forgot to actually share it, so that I made sure it was pushed in your direction. There you go. I has map. Do, 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 do. I got away from I the was way. very blank map. Yeah, I know. It's just a grid for now. Oh, there it goes. Aha. Uh -huh. I see. Hmm. Yeah, it's quiet. There you are. Recall, please, that several sections of this map are further apart than they appear as we go along. But that stairwell leading to the southwest appears to be very short. I am going to say, since it has been a while, everyone go ahead and give me new initiative rolls. Cry. Azeroth, you're at the bottom of the initiative. You should be happy about this. I know, but my initiative rolls like my kryptonite. <laughs> uh, how did I do anything? Oh, yes, now I remember. <laughs> As I said, my <laughs> initiative rolls. Congratulations against all odds. You are worse off. Then you were. I don't want you. Do, does me or Tato go first? Because he rolled a higher number, but I have a higher modifier? The mark. combat tracker has already placed you above him in the initiative order. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm at 33 wounds. Uh, can I get some healing? <laughs> Well, it is your turn to do with as you wish. We're jumping straight into things. Take a potion if you need healing, so bad. Uh, yes, oh yeah, you. that's right. I do have the potions that I hey, constantly forget Your to use. love, the love of your life, gave you a couple of those potions. Come on, don't forget them. <laughs> uh, uh, Azeroth, how many healing things do you have left and or are willing to spend? Let's see, I can cast my level 1 if I, if I really, really, really try and cast my level 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8, 9 more times, yeah. And if you want something a little higher, then uh, good luck. Maybe, well, it depends, but yeah. How, how, much did that, how much healing did that do again? Depends on the level he casts it at, but it's usually one d eight plus his mod. You know, <laughs> one d eight. Uh, it's yeah, basically think, a slightly uh, better version of your healing. Uh, I think potion. I'll just drink my potion of healing. Good. Okay. And as an action to take out and consume a potion, you can still move and take a bonus action. Craig, it's okay. where you're going. It's not your turn. No. Um, I'm going go closer to the big cleric for a bit more protection. How much healing does it do? Now, the potion should have an effect in the inventory, I believe. Oh, whoops. If not, it's 1d8. Okay, one. 
1d8. Um, it is 2d4 plus 2. Oh. Oh, Six plus two, eight. So that would put me at okay, better, but still not good. That will well, be you are turn. less likely to die in one hit. That is Kato. true. Here I am. You are no longer on the effect, under the effects of your full defense, but you may act. I'll reapply my full defense. Okay, I'm not going to take a look. Not yet. You are close enough. Go ahead and give me a perception. You hear what could be multiple creatures speaking just down that stairwell, but you can't quite make out what language they are using. That's okay. In the meantime, you hear eventually the clomping of big hooved feet as another minotaur approaches. And he is going to attack you with a charging gore. All right. So that wasn't quite what I wanted. There you are. Ignore that and take this attack instead. He manages to hit you. Even at disadvantage? Even at disadvantage. Wow. And I need you to make a strength roll. Which I'm doing for you now. You succeed. Eight. So you take 2d4 piercing damage, or 2d8, sorry. There's a 4 next to it. And are not prone. Now you may move crickets. Uh, we had a we had a short rest, right? Nope. Ah. Uh, then I shall move to aid my friend Tato. If I have room to get by him and attempt to attack the uh, Minotaur. You can always move through an ally square as long as you do not end your movement within it. But recall that squares on this map are actually 10 feet, not 5 feet, for purposes of movement. Okay. I will attempt to uh, flurry of blows on the uh, Minotaur. The first strike is a miss, and surprising with the three. The second strike is a solid hit, however. <laughs> I miss. All right, that is all of my attacks. Something happens, and now it is Silver's turn. Uh, 
Okay, Azeroth, both you and Elysian are at about equal straights as far as health goes. Azeroth? He appears to be AFK at the moment. He will progress the initiative. Elysian. Uh, taking out my bow this time to switch and then just moving here behind Silver. Okay, you can take out your bow as part of the move action. Oh. Actually, you already had your bow out, did you not? Oh, did I? Oh, okay. Well, you were firing upon the Minotaurs from range. Oh, so. yeah, I was. Okay, bow's out. Why'd you pass turn already, though? Because I don't have anything else to do? Question mark? You're not going to try to shoot the big hulking monstrosity that's about to bash Cricket School in? That would seem like a very good idea. I mean, if you don't want to, you don't have to. That is a hit. And big damage dealer. Well struck. Tato, now it is your turn. Yay. I'm gonna move right here, and I'm gonna do my triple it. Actually, no, I'll use um, Slayer's Prey first and then double it. Well, that is a hit and a miss. It is the Minotaur's turn, and Tato of the two, I believe you did the most damage to him last round, by a hair. Actually, he can just get the two of you, I believe, if he angles it right. He will lean a little bit to his right and breathe a cone of hot, sparkling embers over both of you. Throwing a dexterity save onto each of you. I get an extra 1d6. So noted. Crickets, you took half damage. I have evasion. Ah, uh, that removes the damage if it was a save. Let me double check. I don't recall in this edition. Please let me know. Take two. You made the save anyway, you don't need to worry. Yeah, instead I take no damage. If I, I will in, remove the damage. If I succeed in a, a dexterity saving throw. Crickets, you manage to limbly twist your way, ourself out of the way of the burning embers. It is Cricket's turn, actually. You take retribution for his tenacity. Correct. Crickets. We're again try to uh, strike at this fiend. After he moves all the things he has on his screen out of the way. One! 
Ooh, Solid attention. blow. Cha! And follow that punch up with a kick. Twenty. Oh. Zim, can we get a crit card? Then roll twenty to clear it. Please roll the twenty to clear the dam or uh, multiplier. You need to specifically roll another attack to clear it. Oh, my bad. Is it bludgeoning or slashing? Slashing. Disarmed. Quadruple damage, and if the damage the target takes is equal to or greater than half of their maximum hit points, they lose an arm or hand. So that's uh, four dice that we're rolling? You quadruple the normal amount of dice, however many that may be. All right, so that'd be four dice. And so I roll one die normally, so that'd be four dice, right? Yeah, yes. it should be. Ta-da! 22 damage is not sufficient to trigger the effect, but it knocks him out anyway. He is down. Well struck, crickets. Well, thank you. Is there another... Does it look like... Oh, well, I'm out. Actually, uh, what senses does Crickets have? Uh, he has a uh, special. It is too dark feet. down there for you to see unless you have dark vision. He does have dark vision at 60 feet. There it is. On that listed. You do indeed see an additional creature down below. Well, but I don't have time to uh, move and attack, so I'll say... I will... Uh... Let's see, so that was both my normal attacks. I only have an extra atta- extra action. So I'll just let everybody know. Is there more coming up the stairs? Brace yourselves. And I'll pass the turn. You will reveal him. Coincidentally, it's his turn next. He comes up to take the place of his friend, standing with his legs braced to either side of the body. And he will swing with his great tacks at crickets. And just misses Cricket, so you lean backwards and you feel the ants rush by your whiskers. So <laughs> you require more training. Alright. Silver will Is that a hit? Sorry, I had to get to the talk button. That is just a miss. Okay, it is Nim's turn. try to move through to get to the other side probably using both his move and a dash I guess since these squares are 10 um I'm going to require an acrobatics check to try and move through his square You just manage it. A stomping hoof comes within centimeters of striking you as you duck between his legs. Azeroth, are you back yet? 
Yeah. Apparently you zoned out for an entire round, but you may now attempt to do something to aid. Or a bet. Your choice. Mm. And I'll hit on with... I will go in with my crossbow. Man, I really should get a new one. Oh, whatever. Uh, that shot goes wide. It hits a wall like 10 feet away from him. Ah, uh, Hmm. Do I get the double attack still? With, uh, I think that's class. Uh... Yeah, you're class with a bonus action. You can take a second attack. Uh -huh. Okay. But with a crossbow, no. You uh. don't have the feet to take a reloading weapon. I think you can spend a bonus action to reload it, though. Okay. I'll reload it. And... Actually, with you then, I will be able to move the room. Can you still hit it from here, or do I have to move up a space? I would say you still have line of effect. Okay. So, take the bow, because it's my most effective weapon for knocking my... Unfortunately, <laughs> Elysian, you just fumbled. Let me get a card. <laughs> for not getting my face punched in again and then a fumble happens my bad re-roll this attack against an ally with the of the target with okay so you are one and two silver is three and four crickets will be five and six Roll a 1d6, and you're gonna hit somebody. Nope, right Silver, now? you are the target of this attack. Elysian, please roll your attack against Silver's AC. Do not hit. <clears throat> well, you actually tried rolling it against crickets. But oh. I believe Silver's AC oh, might sorry. just be better than that. Watch where you're aiming. Yes, Silver actually has much better AC, so you miss. Who? Oh, that was... That was... Very awkward. Hmm. Yep. At least I Oi. didn't blow up two of my allies. Oi, you're not allowed to talk about my shot, I'm not allowed to talk about your shot. Deal? Deal. <laughs> Tato. <laughs> Now, this is a completely different Minotaur than the one we just fought, what is it? Yes, uh, in fact, its friend's body is still lying there, making that difficult terrain. <laughs> huh. mm. Alright, I'm just gonna do the same exact thing I did last round, and I'm gonna focus my ire on this Minotaur, giving him the Slayer's Prey. Actually, now that you're all fighting in the open, Tato, you're a monster slayer, but anybody else within proximity, feel free to give me a perception check. Don't teach my hamster to suck eggs! I am not. Oh. <laughs> Those hamsters suck eggs. Tato, are you going to make one? Oh, I thought I was, um... Exempt. Excluded from this. He just reminded me that I should have had these checks when you first encountered them. Tato, you're a little too busy. You don't really notice anything, but crickets, you you're looking up at this thing. Hmm? And you and Nim both notice an odd brand burned into his chest. In fact, it still looks like it's glowing a bit.
I do not think I approve of your tattoo, sir. The glowing is quite disheartening. What does the glow look like? Oh, wait, they can't tell me. It looks like show enough. Perhaps it's red. I want a glowing tattoo now. Well, it's not a tattoo, it's a brand. Distinct ridges of having it burned into the flesh. I would much prefer the tattoo over a brand. <laughs> but you Crickets, if you were wrestle. to describe it, you would say it looks something like a kettle or a ball within three lines. Look, all I will say is that I think this I think this Minotaur is enchanted. He has a glowing thing on his chest. Perhaps I should try punching harder next time. But it usually works. All right, Teoto, it is your turn. All right. Once again, I'm going to use Slayer's Prey on the Minotaur. And miss, probably. Well, the first one is a miss, the second one hits. Oh, that looks like a six. Oh, wow. <laughs> Very low damage. Hey, damage is damage. I will strike out in a flurry of blows yet again. Oof, I don't know about that one. Oh, oh, that'll hit. It's a very big target, and it's actually very difficult to miss this. You'd have to, I don't know, be a terrible shot or something. Yeah. That, or you didn't strike hard enough, and your sword just kind of bounced off. Goodness, I wonder who could miss such a broad shot. Isn't that oh, right? The, the second blow is a miss. Crickets. Okay. <laughs> we can't all be winners, no? <laughs> no, and that is also a mess. But the first one hit and dealt a little bit of more damage to the Minotaur. Uh, whose turn it is? And he also is going to suck in a massive breath before exhaling a burning cloud of embers. And... <laughs> He will manage to hit all three of the people there if he gets himself at the right angle. What are these fire-breathing minotaurs now? Magical so, bands do wonderful things. Crickets first, because you're the most likely to succeed. You succeed and take no damage. Ha! Good living and healthy meditation. Mm-hmm. Silver succeeds and takes half damage from the fire. Once again, I get an extra 1d6 to the save. I will so note it. Also, that was almost all ones on the damage. What the hell, Silver? Can I take it with an extra 1d6? You make it and take half damage. Cool. Silver, it is your turn. All right. Silver. You know what? If he's going to throw fire at us, I'm going to throw cold at him. Oh, wait. Did I take uh, fire damage last round, too? Uh, you did not. Okay. He... My... Oh, no, he did hit you with the fire breath the first time, so you... Yes, it wasn't last round, but it was recently. All right, remove five points of that damage, please. I will do so. Uh, he definitely... Actually, that was you failing your concentration check. But that was some decent damage to him. It was going to expire anyways. Hmm, fair point. Okay, 
Nim is going to... But he's just gonna attack. After recasting Divine Favor. Solid blow. And also a hit. One moment, my mouse is acting up. Azeroth, it is your turn. I guess I'll give it another good old fashioned cold try. Well, unfortunately, that's a miss. You just you can't do it with these crossbows, man. Reloading. Well, let's hope that I don't accidentally try and shoot one of my allies again. It is usually a good idea to avoid that. Yay. Oh, that one hit. Yay. Yay. Full max damage, no less. You knock out the Minotaur. And for those who are curious, this, once it loads, is the image you see branded upon his chest. Uh, I can try to roll something to know what it is. Let's... Might be religion, might be arcane, who knows. Let's go with religion. No, actually, arcane republic. Nope, never mind. I'm dumb in both. Religion it is. In the tower. You have no idea. I mean, it, it might be something religious, or might be something arcane, it, just, it means nothing to you, Azeroth. Well, I give no fucks. <laughs> this thing is too hard to decipher, let's move on. It's not the family, it's not the proud hoof, right? Family. No, no, he, he still has that same burning skull brand in his ass. Uh oh. I mean, this is something different. <laughs> the crickets... You've studied a number of things as a member of the Monastery of the Yellow Rose, but this this is not side of your area of expertise as well. Very well. Maybe, maybe it looks like it could be arcane, but given that it's burning in the hand, that doesn't look like any arcane symbol or circle you've seen before, so it almost should be more religious. So are they just knocked out, or are they uh, toast? As per standard NPC rules, none of you declared your attacks to be non-lethal, so they are toast. Okay. <laughs> I'd rather they be toast. I don't think they'd make for very good prisoners. I don't think so either. As much as I would like to find out the origin of the symbol. So what is in the big scary room down here? That has a Triforce in the middle. And if you proceed within, you will unveil a little more of the contents. Like so. This chamber is noticeably different, where the other ones that you've been in so far around this area have been natural stonework, cave formations, etc. This has been roughly hewn 
from the stone itself. The floor is relatively flat, but not polished. And there is indeed a very strange symbol in the middle of the floor, though most of it appears to have worn away with the passage of time. Well, does anybody have an idea what DC is, eh? It's not Proud Hoof, so I don't care. Wait, we're referring to the marking on the floor or the person's butt? Either or. I mean... If you've seen one skull, you've seen them all. But as for the floor... I can try my luck again. We. I'm going to assume it's some kind of summoning circle. I'll go with the religious one. Okay, anybody else want to make a roll? <laughs> I'll make an investigation roll, see if I could figure out its purpose. <laughs> I rolled the religious one to figure out if it's religious or not. All right. Elysian, with your investigation check, you can tell that it was carved in with precision despite the rough stonework, whatever it was. And you believe you find traces of what could be blood within the channels. As far as its purpose, obviously something magical, you don't know. It's, it's not the kind of role you make for that. But Nim, you can tell this has obvious religious purposes relating to demons and similarly crickets you've seen not this mark exactly but similar constructs within not so much the teachings of the monastery but you know they come up in conversation they come up in these other things to watch out for sort of lectures this is definitely a demon summoning circle Called long it. unused broken, and if you were to try to make use of it now, who knows what the hell would come through. Nothing hmm. good. Nothing bound to serve you. There's not enough of it left. It would probably backfire anyway. But I did not roll investigation or religion this time. Ah, you were rolling a stealth. My apologies. In that case, Nim, you determine that it is a demon summoning circle. <laughs> Crickets, you are very quiet. Are you proceeding up the stairs? I'm at least looking up the stairs first. Okay, well, they are stairs that appear to lead into another room. Or cavern, or hallway, or something. I will keep creeping forward. <laughs> Might as well. I'm Good going one. trail behind crickets. I will bring up the rear. Not to reveal this little bit to you. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. When I say trail behind, I mean keep a distance between me, him, and whatever's probably going to try and punch his face in. <laughs> okay. Easy and you're following crickets. Crickets, are you proceeding further up? while the others investigate the circle, which you will all be doing for the next several minutes, so please stay back down there. This is what Crickets is doing while you pour over the arcane symbols. Yeah, I feel confident that I'm, uh, or I feel very confident that I'm being quite sneaky. So I'll stick to the shadows as I move ever forward. Okay, you enter an odd little chamber. a little more of that. There you go. Within the center of a vertical shaft that glows ominously with light of fire from deep below is a ten foot wide slab of stone that levitates in place. 
The shaft continues upward into darkness as well, and hot, dry air circulates throughout the room. A small bridge of stone extends outward towards the floating platform, and next to it lies a small brass gong with a striking hammer. Return the slab! But as you approach this area to look at it more closely, Crickets and Elysian, please give me perception rolls. There's a perception. There's a perception. Crickets, you have never seen anything like what you behold in this room. You are distracted. Elysian, you hear distant bellowing. Let me, uh... The strength and depth of this voice you have not heard since the wedding. And the father of a certain minotaur bride. Uh, let me, uh, I was going to say, uh, let me, uh, can I use Lucky to try to redo that? Yes, you right. may do so. That's, that refreshes every game session. I believe it is. I would say long rest. Every long because rest. That okay, sense. then in that case, then but, I probably don't have any. Well, I know you used one on Cog and Mull. Okay. And you might have used one in combat, but it's three charges, so you yeah. should have at least one left. All right, I'll try. I'll try for the perception just to make sure. Boop. Okay, crickets. You also hear the bellow, but you can't make out anything of what is being said. Okay. It just sounds like some loud voice somewhere in the distance. From the pit or from Elysian, you can make out that it is coming from that northernmost passage. I'm going to go stealth. Please stealth. Yes. Which I do not believe I have a stealth roll from you yet, so please make one. Okay. Stealth. Boop. Okay, are you going to keep watch there for a while or continue up down earth? I'm going to continue up the path and see if I can make out what's going on there. It's not being spotted. Okay, give me half a moment here. I will let you know what you see. The first creature to come along your path or to come into your sight around the bend is another minotaur, just like the ones you've been fighting. But there is a larger shadowed shape behind him. Are they speaking? No, they appear to be lumbering along as quickly as they can. Follow them? Oh, no. They're coming to you. Oh, they're coming this way. Um, well, you know what this calls for? Dropping retreat? A retreat and lots of ball bearings. All right. Do you have on the top of your head the DC for those ball bearings? I do not. Let me see if it's in the, um, let me see if it's in description for it. Uh, DC 10. Yes, there it is. Must succeed on a DC 10 dexterity saving throw or fall prone. You know what? Just to make things interesting, I will allow you to try to increase the DC with a sleight of hand check. Are you sure you want to do that? Meh. It's okay. More fun this way. <laughs> That's a Sorry. DM's line. Are you sure you want to do that? You don't ask the DM. Line. Yeah, except the I DM have a plus sixteen that. to any slave hand check. I didn't say I'd make it the new DC. I said increase the DC. All right. 
how far do you retreat after facing your nefarious trap? As far they are as slower I can, than you. As far as I can, so that... Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. To warn everybody that there are more Minotaurs coming. Remember these squares are ten feet. Oh, ten feet. Yes, oh, whoops. Okay, I thought and... they were five feet. One, two, three. As they round the bend, they do indeed slip upon the layer of ball bearings falling prone with bellows of pain and rage. Okay. Um, it seems most of your party is too far away to initiate, though, on that. Yeah, and I don't want to get close to them. We are now moving into proper initiative, so everybody please give me a fresh set. Come now, Azeroth, how could you possibly do worse than you've done so far? I'm pretty sure that's spare by four. Tato, you ruined my streak, gosh darn it. Wow. <laughs> It makes you feel better, you still wouldn't have been bottom of the initiative. All right. Crickets, you are aware of the enemy, and it is your turn. It's actually just advanced to the next round. There we go. All right, I will uh, take my free action to call out behind me down the tunnel. We have more Minotaurs! Come quick! And then I will uh, use uh, Fist of Unbroken Air, with uh, which is uh, two key points, and I will spend an extra key point. No, an extra, is it extra one or two? Jesus. Let me look up the ability real quick. I'm so sorry. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Oh my god, I've got so many book stuff open right now. I'm sorry. There we go. All right, eighth. Okay, so I have to spend three key points in a round. All right, so Fist of Unbroken Air. They got to be within 30 feet. So that's uh, 10, 20, 30. So I can move here. One, two, and that should be within 30 feet, correct? Correct. Give me half a moment before you do anything to them to find the prone condition. Okay. All right. It has been applied by all means. All right. So yeah. So I can. Uh, so I can spend three key in a round. So the way this works is uh, they. Uh, I'm going to say B, uh, B12 needs to make a uh, strength saving throw, which I don't know how prone comes into effect on that. I don't believe uh, it does. It's mostly that you have advantage to attack them with melee. Okay. Uh, God, because they're probably they're probably going to be able to make a uh, they're probably going to be able to make that attack though, aren't they? That saving throw. Not Is necessarily. They both failed against the ball bearings. Yeah. Well, that's a dex saving throw. Damn. These are minotaurs. Ah, uh, why not? I'll use Fist of Unbroken Air. I'll spend the uh, three key points. Uh, <laughs> if he uh, makes, if he makes a strength save, uh, he'll take. Uh, let's see. He'll end up taking. They take half damage and aren't knocked back. If they fail, they take uh, 3d10 plus 1d10 from the extra key point and uh, will get pushed back 20 feet extra. Okay, go ahead and make the roll. Or uh, make the DC and which one you are targeting. 
uh, I'm targeting uh, uh, B12. Okay, B12 is the smaller of the two. The unidentified one is much oh. larger. I'll do the big one then, even though it's going to have a higher chance of making that save. Uh, it doesn't look like my action has the ability to make them make the save anymore. Well, he did not make the save, unless your DC Woo. is somehow a 10. Nope. It's, uh... No, just, just make a strength save. It doesn't tell me what the diff is. Okay, well, you scooch him along the ground. Go ahead and apply your damage. Boop. Ah! I did the wrong... You did an incorrect boop? Yes, I did. How do I, how do I, get, how do I pull the damage off of this, then? Um, let me see your sheet here. If you click the little hourglass, it'll have the damage down there. Ah, it there we... Not hourglass, okay, magnifying yeah. glass. There we go. I'm sorry. So yeah, it was DC 14. And here comes the damage. Whoop! Hey does not look happy with you, my friend. I bet he doesn't. That was still a pretty darn good hit. Uh, and then that is the uh, the end of my action this round. Is that Can a full pass action? the initiative to Elysium. Yay! Um, do I have any other tools I can use because I my bow was ineffective against uh, people who were prone last time I checked? I think they have, or you have disadvantage on the attack, or attacking prone, or something like that. I That's mean... correct. Disadvantage uh, with ranged attacks against prone enemies. Good try using something that I have never used before since I've gone in. I actually might consider it giving it to somebody else because it's just okay. Been just in... what is it? I was looking at the ring of branches. That can't be transferred to someone else. Well, might as well try it against the minotaurs. One, two, eh, X, three. Although I'm not within range of the minotaurs, am I? Uh, not for a melee, definitely. Okay, skip turn then. Minotaur B12 will take his move action to stand up and his action to move a little bit closer to the people who hurt himself. He will move at half speed and does not quite make it to you. The other larger Minotaur also stands and advances, but he points at Crickets and Elysian, growling something in a booming voice that I'm going to say, those of you in the next room, if you are paying attention by this time, will be able to make out. I'm just going to throw this out there. Is he walking through the bald area again? If you move at half speed, there is no oh, penalty. Bummer. Bummer. Or though half speed is the penalty, there is no save. Oh, he didn't get knocked out of it and had to walk back into it? Yes, and he's moving at half speed and can't reach okay. you this round. Okay, he's, he's being careful. I believe you were the only one to understand that phrasing. It is your turn. What did they say? Uh, would you actually know that Nim would understand it? No. Not to mention, we're currently, you know, about 40 feet apart. Oh, he's being very noisy. You can hear him. The ceiling is raining dust. 
Oh, yes. But no, Nim, you were the only one who spoke his language. Well, that's about as far as I can get. It's all movement for me, too, unfortunately. I wish our party would have told us the room was clear up to a certain point. Cry. <laughs> 